Thank you for joining us. My name is Jonathan Andrews, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the latest webinar from Advantage Technologies titled, Why Upgrade to Write Back 16.2? Jeff Gunsler, our Vice President of Technical Services, is going to walk you through some interesting features added in the latest version of Write Facts and explain why now is the perfect time to begin planning your Write Facts upgrade. Jeff has over 20 years experience working with Write Facts, and many of you have worked with him on projects in the past. With that, I'll turn the webinar over to Jeff. Thank you, John. And as John just mentioned, my name is Jeff Kunzler, and I'll be hosting today's webinar titled, Why Upgrade to WriteFact 16.2? We will first discuss open text procedures and policies. Then we'll go into the new features and capabilities of WriteFact 16.2. I'll then do a very brief live demo so you can see some of the new features. After that, I'll talk about how to plan for the upgrade and introduce some add-on components and modules. All right, about Advantage. So Advantage is a leading provider and integrator of WriteFax, cloud, fax, and document delivery solutions for over 20 years. We are number one WriteFax sales and support in North America, and 2017 OpenText top three value added reseller. We have a North American based support desk with an experienced staff of certified engineers, and as I always mention, that's an important one. We do not outsource our help desk. All calls and emails are answered from our North American-based support. And our global customer base includes Fortune 100 companies, large healthcare organizations, and government agencies. We are an OpenText partner support, uh, OpenText partner reseller at the platinum level, and also a partner distributor. Okay, so let's get into the OpenText procedures and policies. So as you can see from the slide, RightFax went from version 10.6 to 16.2. There was no versions between them, and it was done to align RightFax with the rest of OpenText product suite. There you go, 10.5, 10.6, and we're missing something here, but not really. That's just the way they did it. As part of OpenText release schedule policies, there will be no new features released until RightFax 16.4 which is scheduled for release in 2018. This was done because in the past, releasing too many service packs and feature packs, while it did fix bugs and add features, it also introduced new bugs. So having more time between these releases will allow a more thorough testing period and in turn make the release more stable. So let's talk about current versus sustaining maintenance. So current maintenance is the first three-year period following a new version release of WriteFax where the software is fully supported. During current maintenance, customers may request feature enhance enhancements, bug fixes, access to webinars, forums, and events. Customers will have access to all technical and product information, including the OpenText Knowledge Center. When current maintenance expires, a WriteFax version enters the sustaining maintenance stage and will continue to be supported on, on a limited basis by Advantage and OpenText. Customers will still have access to the OpenText Knowledge Center, but there will be no development work to fix product defects or feature enhancements. So this is the WriteFax product life cycle grid. So as you can see from the WriteFax support schedule, WriteFax 10.6 will still be fully supported until November 2018. If you are running a version of WriteFax that is in sustaining maintenance, which would be 10.5 or earlier, we should talk about getting you upgraded to a fully supported version. Even if you are on WriteFax 10.6, now would be a good time to start planning your upgrade to 16.2. Okay, in the next few slides, we'll be going over the new features and capabilities of WriteFax 16.2 followed by a brief live software demo. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the new web administration tool. Some of you might be familiar with the WebEFM. WebEFM was the first attempt at a web-based replacement for Enterprise Fax Manager. The new web administration tool is much more robust and feature-rich web-based replacement for EFM. The web admin tool will run on all browsers and mobile devices. And we'll see this during the demo. So 
So here's some new features of the web admin tool. So it's a, it's a big step towards eliminating the need to use any thick client in your RightFacts environment. The RightFacts web client already has about 99% of the functionality of the RightFacts utility, so this is the next logical step. Also, direct access to the MFB connected administration allows for one less utility to run. Again, you'll see this in a minute. Administrative roles are an important enhancement since in previous versions you either had a regular user or full administrator. Now you can give users limited administrative roles such as a user that can control additions and deletions of users but cannot change right back service configurations. The read-only administrator is another important one which you'll see in a minute. Here's some other administrative features. So the ability to manage delegates from EFM is an important administrative change to simplify user management. No longer do you need to use Factutil to manage delegates. It was confusing to many RightFax administrators why they had to do all their RightFax administration from EFM except managing delegates. Now it can be done directly from EFM. Another new feature is the ability to disable and re-enable RightFax user accounts. This feature is very useful if you have a RightFax user that needs to take a temporary leave of absence and you want to disable the account while they arrest for security reasons. Multiple retry settings on failed faxes allow you to decide how many times your RightFax server will call a fax number based on the failure of the call. For example, you can set the retry settings for five if the number, sorry, if the call received was a normal busy and zero if it was a human that answered. The right facts image high availability module. So this is a really nice enhancement that many customers have asked me about. It takes away the requirement to have a shared image store such as a NAS or SAN, which can be challenging for some organizations. OpenText has tested this module and there is no performance degradation compared to traditional image storage. Many of you already have a SQL environment with different types of redundancy. Moving the images into your SQL environment will allow RightFax to take advantage of whatever redundancies you're already using. There is an additional cost for this module. Okay, the updated MFP connectors simplify the administration and use of your MFP devices. More and more organizations are integrating their MFPs with RightFax and are benefit, benefiting from the cost of savings sorry, benefiting from the cost savings of removing all the analog lines and increased security of having all paper documents that are sent from the MFP stored electronically. Once a document is sent from an MFP that is integrated with RightFax, you benefit from all the features that RightFax has to offer, including email notifications, encryption, and security. Okay. And the first thing I'd like to show you is the web admin. So I have a shortcut here. I'm going to log in here. Okay, great. So, first thing I'd like to do is click on a user and show you what it looks like here in the, in the new web admin. Choose B. Hoffman here. And as you can see, I can go edit. And you have all the functionality that you have in the full thick EFM. Your username, your passwords, all the features, the routing types, formats. One of the things I want to show you now is under permissions, we have our new administrative access. So we have not only our standard on or off, which was always available, and the administrator can bypass privacy restriction, but now we also have read-only administrator, a user management administrator, which allows them to control users but not services and other things on the right facts, and also we can enable or disable the ability to manage the services in the web admin. I'm going to cancel that. I'm also going to show you from the thick client I wanted to bring up now. There's a couple of things you still need to do from the thick client. One of them is on the users. Now this new delegate tool. So if I right click on a user, so if I highlight, right click now, you have a couple of new things here. You have your managed delegates, which was only available in Factutil. It now can be done directly from EFM. And here's your disable and enable account. 
So this is where you can temporarily disable an account. All the faxes will stay there. Their, their account will still be reserved, but no one will be able to log into it or log in, do anything with the account until it's enabled. Some of the other things I'd like to show you is under services. If I click on the right fax server module here, you will see the retry settings now. So now we have our busy, human answered, special information tone, no loop errors, other SMS. The default is five times with a five minute interval. These can be adjusted very granular now, so you can set busy for five, but maybe you can answer it to one. So it'll try one at a time, but you might even want to set it to zero, which means it it won't retry at all. Under advanced, we have a couple of new things here. One major new thing is the store images in SQL. So by clicking this, moving forward, it would now store all the images in SQL. You also have the ability to run a command line tool if this was an existing system and you wanted to migrate your images from a standard stores to SQL, we can run a tool that will move them. And then once this is checked, going forward, all your additional images that come in will be stored in SQL. The other thing I'd like to point out, um, a lot of people probably aren't today on running a previous version before 16, I'm sorry, before 10.6 FP3. Um, so there were some big changes that carried over to 16.2, including the layout of Enterprise Fax Manager. So now services have their own pane. They've added a few things like statistics, which you can see all your stats a little bit more detailed than the previous version, and conversions, which will show you how long the average conversion is taking. This is great for troubleshooting. So, for example, in this system, I would see an average word to PNG, or more importantly, maybe TIFF to PDF, is about 3.87 seconds. If I was getting complaints from my users that conversions are very slow or not working at all, I might see this average jump very high. That would tell me right away I need to call the Advantage Support Desk and, and see what's going on. But it really will help support and it will help troubleshoot knowing what kind of images are taking a long time to convert. And it will help get that solved a little quicker than before. Another new thing is connection. So we can currently see who is connected right now to the system. You have the ability to right click and remove from the view, but you cannot remove them. You can't throw them out of the system, but you can, if it's something that, that a system or that's always connected and you didn't want to see it, you can remove it. And here's the MFP configuration we talked about. So here's where you'd go in and you can right click and manage it. Well, I should have showed you from the web admin, but you can manage it from the web admin. It takes you right in. And they, so it's right here. And this is where you would add delete and control your licensing for your MFPs. You can even bring up the EDC from here. Okay, so now let's talk about planning for the upgrade. So as you can see from the slide, WriteFax 16.2 now fully supports Windows Server 2016 and no longer supports Windows Server 2008. Windows Server 2008 R2 is still supported. WriteFax 16.2 also fully supports Outlook 2016. WriteFax 16.2 system requirements can be downloaded from the Advantage Technologies website at any time. Okay, so let me walk you through a typical Advantage Upgrade PS project. So the first thing we would have to do if you were upgrading from any version, even 10.5 to 10.6, or in, in most cases, now would be 10.6 to 16.2, we would start with our project planning, which what we'd like to do is document all the integrations, so any applications or any, any custom applications, especially that are using WriteFax, we have to document and make sure there'll be no problems when we upgrade. We propose design improvements, which is we look at your current system, do a health check, and make sure the design and the, and the way it's laid out is, is the best way we can do it or the way you can do it. And then we develop a project plan. So the project plan is really detailed on how we're going to get you from the current version you're on to the new version. Next thing, we do a, a new install and migration, which means we'll do a fresh install of the current version. We will do a system configuration, which means that anything system related, which would be work service, optional modules, or registry settings, we will then migrate and copy to the new system. So any if you have four work servers on the old system and it's optimized, we will make sure you have the same four work servers on the new system. 
make sure your email gateways line up, make sure in your custom registry, anything customized within the application is now configured on the new system. And then lastly, using specific tools, we can migrate the existing users and faxes. And that also obviously includes phone books, user groups, really all the database entries. So it's really the install system, which would be registry and custom configuration of services, and then migrate of the database settings, which would be users, faxes, phone books, groups, things like that. So at that point, we currently have a really a, a duplicate of your current system. We have the new, new version with all the settings just like the old version, including the users, the work servers, the email gateways. At that point, we could do, we could test all fax integration. So when we documented the integrations, we can now temporarily, in most cases at least, point them to the new system, make sure they work with the new system. If there are any issues, we'll resolve them. And the beauty is this is all done without it touching your current system. So there's no downtime. We can do this on the side. We could do this for a couple of weeks. We could do it up to a month. We, for 30 days, we can test everything and make sure everything's clean and resolve any issues we have. And then once the client approves and we think everything's in great shape, we can schedule the cutover. So the system cutover is the only time there will be some outage. The only time that the only reason there is an outage is because when we do a cutover, two things have to happen. One is telecom, be it legacy cards an appliance of some sort, like a fax cable or even, or even pure SIP, there is a point where we have to take the current telecom and point it to the new environment. Usually it's pretty quick. It could be as quick as if it's all IP, just you know, changing the IP on your SBC or gateway to point to the new environment. It could be as complex as having a totally new telecom and maybe you're going from a legacy fax card to new SIP and that would be porting numbers. So at that point we'd have to make sure your telephone carrier is ready to portal your numbers to the new environment, be it SIP or even just a, a new PBX. So the outage could be as quick as five minutes if it's just pointing your current system or your current SBC or gateway to the new, or it could be as long as up to an hour based on how long it takes your carrier to port a bunch of numbers. The truth is, though, it's still limited compared to what it would be if we tried to do an in-place or try to take down your current system and rebuild it from scratch. And the great thing about it is if there are any major issues that come during the cutover after the cutover, we have a very simple rollback path, which is really just moving telecom back and repointing everyone back to the current server. Okay, let's talk a little about add-on components. Okay, the first one I'd like to talk about is, is FaxPulse 1.7. So FaxPulse BI has three analytics dashboards and one system status dashboard tracking over 50 right fax metrics. RightFax Pulse BI creates a data warehouse of all your fax metadata, allowing you to purge data from your RightFax system, but still be able to report on it. With simple controls to filter and export data, you can easily target specific information and share that information with other people in your organization. Fax Pulse BI has been around for about three years and is currently reporting on over 100 RightFax servers. This product is a bolt-on product for RightFax with no agents, and no downtime necessary to install. And I just want to add a couple of things on it. We have done, and we plan on doing some more webinars just about FaxPulse. It's, it's a really nice product. It has a lot of great features, but um, as we always say after this webinar, this slide will be available so you can actually read a little bit more about it. We do have some white papers on it, and we will definitely notify you when we're doing our next FaxPulse webinar. The IQ Fax Archive Connector is a great product for archiving your right fax faxes. It is easy to use and provides a great interface for searching for archived faxes. Right fax was never designed as a long-term storage solution for faxes. Keeping hundreds of thousands of faxes on your right fax server will start to slow performance and make it harder to administer your right fax server. We've installed a bunch of these now and um, our customer base is very happy. They find it's a great product just for pure archiving. And um, we also will be doing some dedicated webinars on this product in the future, and we'll make sure you guys notice, are notified. Now, uh, the Sonus SBC. So the Sonus SBC 1000 is a, fully, a full featured fax gateway slash session border controller because it can be used for either one. So fax gateway would be really um, converting, let's say, a PRI or a standard T1 line to IP, which would be SIP. Or a session border controller would be purely for, if it was pure IP all the way out to your carrier, you can have this in the middle as a session border controller. It's available in multiple configurations, 
supporting a variety of telephony, including analog, PRI-T1, and SIP. It can work either as a primary fax gateway or a gateway at a remote office with local telephony requirements. WriteFax document Sorry, WriteFax Doc Transport Server can be installed on the optional ASM server module, allowing for an easy deployment of WriteFax services either in your main data center or at a satellite office. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Doc Transport Server so people aren't familiar. So, what we can actually do is, <clears throat> excuse me, on this device itself, install WriteFax Remote Doc Transport. So, we actually, this has a little built in Windows server that we can run. RDT, right Fax Remote Doc Transport Services on, and then place this in a remote office. The advantage of that is if you have your main office, let's say, in New York, and you have another office in California, it's really not a good idea to run SIP over that kind of distance. So, for example, if you had a, a carry, you had a PBX in California that answered the call and then had to generate that call across your own WAN to be answered by the controller in New York, you would have some latency on the uh, SIP packets and you could run into issues. So what's nice about this is running the right fax remote doc, remote doc transport services on this device in California. Now the, the call will be answered there and the generic fax will be created right on this device, right, right through the RDT software. And then it's just a file copy over the WAN and it's not time sensitive at all at that point to be fully processed on your primary right fax server, let's say in New York. This way you don't have any telecom issues and you can have these spread out all over the country. So let's go through a summary here. So WriteFax 16.2 has some important new features. So the first thing we talked about, well, not really the first thing, but I think the most important thing we talked about was the fax image high availability module. The new web administration tool is, is kind of neat and I think will really make it a lot easier to deploy WriteFax not having to push out any clients anymore and we went through some of the administrative enhancements. We talked about how upgrades should be considered carefully and to definitely you need to contact your Advantage account manager to plan a successful implementation. And we also talked about some add-on components, including the new Fax BI tool for advanced analytics and monitoring, the IQ Fax archive connector, and although it's not on the slide, we did talk about the Sonus SBC. All right, well, thank you all for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye.